Hello everyone and welcome to my channel And today I'll be reading a Talonary X listener by me So let's get into it Talonary was not the most person who you would expect To be someone so flirty or such as he sometimes He was pretty reasonable And normal to say the least When comparing him to the rest of the inhabitants of Tevat So really it was already an advantage sometimes. He was someone you could be relaxed with, someone who was pretty comfortable as a partner, and someone where you did not have to expect some weird things from him. It was nice, and the weirdest encounters would probably be just having some things to deal with in the forest, which wasn't that bad. It was his responsibility, which he completely understood and appreciated. He was making a good contribution to this world, and they were so proud of him for doing all of that. That, however, does not bring us to today, though, because he's a little bit more busy, and you're tired of that. It seemed like Curly's condition was only getting worse, and with her mental still not being freed from Ruka Devada's remains, which no one knows this issue, actually. It's still causing those with Eliza to get even more sick. And he was so scared that Goldie's condition could reach a state where he couldn't help her anymore. But even then, he wanted to keep hoping and do his best. That's why he went looking for more herbs. For her sake. And he appreciated it. And you understood, so you could never complain about it. But you can't help but feel along with all the looking for herbs and his normal work as a forest watcher and taking care of everyone in the forest. There's literally no time for you. And it's not like you can blame him. He knew his life could get hectic at any time. The moment you married him. But it's fine. It's fine. Because Danari was done with looking for herbs. He hadn't just told you that because he wanted to be a surprise. He was preparing a date night for you too. One that could be memorable. And one that would at least make up for a time lost somehow. On any level. It doesn't have to make up for it completely. But at least make you happy and smile. Because your smile was one of the only sights that you would do anything for. And it was certainly worth the effort of preparing everything, lighting up the candles, and cooking up your favorite meals, getting dressed and preparing something for you to wear, since you probably didn't want to take in so much time to wear it, or the food will get cold. It just had to be a surprise. And that's when you woke up. And saw that Thirsty had put it in your bed. He told you to wear it. And nothing else. So I did exactly that. And you came out of your room. To see the table set. Rooms turned off. With only the candles lighting your way. As you walked over to him. Kissing him softly. And thanking him for this. The two of you sat on the table as you enjoyed your food. Down Mary, Giving you a look, one full of love and pure adoration for you. And when you were done, he turned on the music. But before he could dance, he kissed you again, apologizing for leaving you alone so long, for not taking care of you properly. But he told you that he was so grateful to have a patient partner like you. That was able to understand his priorities and where his responsibilities lay. And you were so glad that you could be that for him. You would bear it all again, given the choice. If only to have him at peace and for him to be able to do what he wants. He loves you and you love him. And that's what matters. And when you begin to dance, your bodies was close to one another. In ways that you have longed for, for many weeks. 
Connery, kissing your forehead, his hand in your hair, and the other on your back. And that's when it sneaks down to your butt, and he gives it a squeeze, making you blush and freeze in place. Donnery. Um, yes, he said. Acting was for innocence. Donnery, did you just... He sighed softly, not able to help the smile that shows up on his face. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry about it. He kisses your cheek, smiling, even though there's a little bit of a blush on his face. It's fine, right? Besides, you can't tell me you haven't missed me like I miss you. We're just gonna dance, and we could do more. Only if that's what you want. You trust me, Wyatt, right? You blushed brightly, and your heart, it felt like it was skipping beats, not just one. Donnery, you trust me to take care of you, don't you, Ion? He asked again, and that's when he nodded, because you truly loved him and trusted him with your heart, life, and soul. You would give it all to him and know that you will take good care of it, and you already have. You have given him your heart in his hands. For him to do with as he pleases. And so far, he's only taken care of it and loved it as it deserves. And that's when you continue on your dance. As you leave soft kisses on your collarbones and neck. Murmuring words of praise and love. And after you're done, you sit on his lap as he strokes your hair. The two of you start to make out. He takes it all slow. And it's intimate and needy. And it's every feeling you have been struggling to put into one thing. He loves you so, so much. And it shows in every move he does. In the way his lips press against yours. In the way he holds you so close like he's greedy and wanting for more. And that's when you know that you also have to give it to him. And... When Kali wakes up late, and knocks on your door, and you still have not woken up, she knows something must be up, but she doesn't comment on it. Instead, she goes on about her day on her own. If Donar is having fun, then she'll let him. God knows he's worked hard enough, and you and him deserve all the fun that you can have, and rest, obviously.